While fixing her own pipe at the Candle Riggs Brewery in Alloa, 19-year-old Alexander Terry, an apprentice plumber, fell around 30 feet to his death from the roof of the brewery in August 1898. A few weeks later, a fatal accident inquiry was held. This was done in accordance with the Fatal Accident Inquiry Scotland Act of 1895. Alexander Norval, an Alloa solicitor, acted on behalf of the relatives of Terry, while John Reed of Alloa acted on behalf of Robert Willison, a co-owner with his brother John of the Alloa Copper Works, the company that employed the young apprentice. The Copper Works made all kind of distillery and brewery fittings, including stills, as well as carrying out engineering works and pipe fitting. On Wednesday 7th September 1898, Sheriff Tyndall B. Johnson was in the chair at the Sheriff Court, known at the time as the County Buildings, along with the jury to hear evidence of what had happened to the young man. James Hall was the first witness called. He worked for Willison at their brass and iron foundry in Bank Street in Alloa. At the time of the incident, Friday 19th August, Hall was with Terry as they set up the roans on the edge of the roof of new buildings that housed new automatic malting machinery, which was in the process of being erected by the brewery owned by George Younger and Son Limited. A third storey had been added to the original too, and the building was finished except for the fitting of the pipes. They were standing on a platform raised 18 inches from the roof, and it measured 19 inches wide. It was secured in place by wood, and Hall was fitting the roan head with one leg on the platform and one on the wall head. Terry was standing behind him, when he last saw the apprentice, he had a firm foothold on the platform, with one foot on the wall head and the other on the roof. He wasn't leaning forward, but was assisting Hall, handing him tools that he asked for. He happened to turn round and, not seeing him, looked over onto the street. He was horrified to see Terry lying there. No one else was on the roof, and he never saw Terry fall, and didn't know that he had, until he looked down. The incident happened around 8.45 that morning, just two and a half hours or so after work had begun. The next witness was Herbert Harrison of Mar Place in Alloa. He worked for James Grant, a plasterer and slater, that morning, he was working on the roof of the malt house, on the south side, close to the mill, and was aware of Terry and Hall working on the north side. He knew they'd begun working a little after six o'clock that morning, and thought the accident had taken place at either 8.35 or 8.40. He didn't see them from where he was, as the roof was not yet slated. Although he'd not spoken to Terry, he had seen him working on the roof, and he was just going about his work, as usual. Hall then came over and told him what had happened. He, too, looked over and saw Terry lying in the street. He hurried down off the roof, but by the time he got there, Terry was being carried through the pend of the brewery. He'd heard nothing, no screams or shouts from Terry. Alexander Fife of Primrose Place in Alloa was next to give his account of what had happened. He worked as a cellarman for Youngers, and on that morning he was working in the cellar opposite the new building. At around nine o'clock he heard some shouting and rushed out. He saw the body huddled up on the street, but at first didn't know who it was. He was then told Terry had fallen from the roof above by a Mrs Connell. He lifted him up, but he was dead. 
his left jaw smashed. The body was then taken into the engine house of the brewery, he told the court. He'd seen him earlier going about his work as normal, and he saw Hall with him. Dr Milne of Marsh Street in Alloa got word there'd been an accident around nine o'clock and had arrived at the site around ten minutes later. Another man in the area at the time was Provis James Grant. He later said the boy's head had hit the curb of the path with great force and proceeded to get medical assistance from Dr Milne and Dr MacLeod Monroe. Milne had arrived at the candle rigs around ten minutes later and was shown to the body which had now been laid out in the malt barns. He examined him, but knew he was dead. He told the court that there was a double fracture to the jaw and a fracture to the base of the skull. There were no other marks on any other part of his body, just his head. He concluded that he died of a severe concussion of the brain caused by the fall. John Johnson, a police officer with the Borough Police, then gave his testimony. On hearing of the incident, he went to the malt house where he found Dr Milne carrying out his examination. The officer then set about drawing up a sketch plan of the scene of the incident. This was shown as evidence to the sheriff and the jury. Johnson was the final witness. The Procurator Fiscal for the County of Cuckmanninshire, John Balfour Haig, told the jury that what they had to do was determine the time, place and cause of the incident. The jury then retired, but after only a quarter of an hour returned with their verdict. Alexander Scott, a manufacturer in Tillicutri and foreman of the jury, gave the verdict in accordance with the evidence that Terry had died due to concussion of the brain caused by the fall. The sheriff thanked the jury and dismissed them as the court rose. Terry had lived at the Gartlet, Kilbegi by Kincardine. He was quiet and industrious, and it was surmised that he may have fainted and fallen to his death, hence why no screams were heard. It's possible he knew nothing about it. He had shown no signs of ill health or depression, and was just acting the way he usually did. At the shed, Terry had been dressed and placed in a coffin. Then, just before two o'clock, he was taken by hers to his parents' house at Kilbegi. He was buried a few days later. The construction industry today has tight health and safety rules, but as recently as March 2022, construction workers still die at their place of work.